Let's consider these three reactions and writing the equilibrium constant. So the equilibrium constant is strictly defined in terms of pressures, but we extended that to concentrations. And we can extend the equilibrium constant for a mixture of solids, liquids, and gases. Now, this first reaction, we have carbon solid, carbon dioxide in the gas phase, and carbon monoxide in the gas phase. So how do we treat solids? Well, if you have a solid, and you have a large amount and a smaller amount of the same solid, the concentration of the solid in both of these is the same, if the density is the same. So at the same temperature and pressure, the densities of these solids are the same, so their concentrations are the same. So remember, density is equal to mass over volume. And so the mass is related to the number of moles, the concentration. <coughs> concentration is moles over volume, and moles is mass over molecular weight. And so the density is directly related to the concentration. Molecular weight for the same solid species is the same. So the concentrations stay the same even though the amounts differ. So even though carbon is reacting, its concentration doesn't change even though the amount is decreasing during the reaction. So carbons and pure liquids, the concentrations are the same because their densities are the same. So we don't include those in the equilibrium constant since it's just a constant. So we would neglect the solid here for carbon dioxide. So the equilibrium constant for this reaction, I'll write it in terms of concentration, is equal to the concentration of the product, carbon monoxide, squared, divided by the concentration of carbon dioxide reactant to the first power, and I would leave out the solid. Let's consider this second reaction. I have two solids and one gas. So I'd write the equilibrium constant. I'll write this one in terms of pressure. So we would neglect or leave out the solids in the reaction and not include those in the equilibrium constant. So we only have one gas species. So the equilibrium constant will be the pressure of CO2 raised to the first power. So that's all there is for the equilibrium constant. This is the only product we would include, because we're not going to include the solids. Now, let's look at this bottom reaction. This is in solution. We have gas phase, liquid, and dissolved in solution species. So let's write the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. Concentration is a more useful unit for solution species. So we would have the concentrations of the products. Now these are dissolved in water, so their concentrations are dependent upon their amounts. So we include aqueous substances in the equilibrium constant. We have a liquid, water, and we have a gas. So the liquid we would not include in the equilibrium constant because of the same argument we used for solids. Even though the liquid amount changes, its density is the, is the same, and so its concentration is the same, so its concentration is a, is, a, is a constant. Okay, so we'd include the gas and the aqueous phases. So our equilibrium constant would be the concentration of H3O plus. raised to the first power times the concentration of the HCO3 minus raised to the first power divided by 
And the only thing the reactant will include is the gas concentration of CO2 raised to the first power. So this would be the equilibrium constant for this bottom reaction. 